he's basically making this point like, listen, there are things that really matter yeah. and there are things that don't actually matter yeah. that much. Welcome back to The Move, where we are vibing with the book 10 minutes at a time. Not only have we been vibing with the book, but we've been doing some stuff on the board. On the board, you see a sentence that was, I forget how to, what the name of that thing is, like deconstructed or something anyway. But sure. it's there because we're on set, on our location. On location. On location, doing some meetings with the Love Reality Tour, and we use that big old white board to explain some things, and that's what we did last night. And, and you wanted to leave it up because you're gonna build on that. Because I'm gonna tonight. build on it tonight. So just in case you're wondering, why is that what there? Is that there? That's yes. why it's there. Anyway, so today's episode, we're gonna be on Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. And the question that we like to ask is, Have you read it? It's important to read it. We actually tried to shoot this episode before and we realized we missed the point of the text. Yeah, we needed we, to we, read it we went several times, right? So go read it. Maybe even consider rereading it. Yes. And we'll it's be here. Worth it. Ready for you to go. 10 minutes on the clock starting now. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, so what we did was that we had a lengthy discussion yep. over the foods and we were going to eventually move over to the day. Mm -hmm. But after sitting through that and rereading the text, we're like, that's not Paul's point. We had a lengthy discussion in the first uh, take of this Correct. 10 minutes. Yep. And we got, I like the phrase you use, we got caught up in the weeds. Yes. Right. Paul's using those two things as examples of a different thing. What two things? He's talking about uh, the person who only eats vegetables or the person who worships on a particular day. Like mm -hmm. he's using these examples and we can go into the weeds as mm -hmm. to, well, which one's right? Should we mm -hmm. eat the vegetables? Should we eat the meat? Should mm -hmm. we worship on this day or that day? Mm -hmm. All that's an interesting thought experiment, mm -hmm. but Paul's actually not trying to make that point. So let me frame. Frame for me. So what you're telling me is that there is a group of believers maybe in Rome, mm -hmm. that uh, have some folks who abstain from meats and others who eat meats. And the background here seems to be meat sacrificed to idols. Or It could some be. We know that that was definitely the case in Corinth. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's there in Romans yeah. too. And there's strong textual links that it is, given the Greek usage of certain words. Mm -hmm. But there's also room for others who interpret that it is clean versus unclean foods. That could be that as well. That or it could that. just be meat and zero meat, and just zero vegetarianism. Meat, right? there's, like, there's a lot of ways that we could approach it, but uh -huh. all of those things fall short. Because given that context, Paul is just taking that as an opportunity to make a point that we can apply to any and every of those situations. Correct. And yes. that point there is in, in, in verse one, except the, the one who's weak in the faith, not for the purpose of quarreling, quarreling over opinions. And I like that, that, that phrasing, quarreling over, over opinions. He's, he's basically making this point like, listen, there are things that really matter yeah. and there are things that don't actually matter yeah. that much. Doctrine. Doctrine matters a lot. Uh, Paul talks a lot. Like, make sure no one preaches another gospel. You know, don't um, the Antichrist is the one who confesses that mm -hmm. that Jesus is not Lord or whatever the case mm -hmm. is, right? So, doctrine matters a lot to mm -hmm. Paul. It's kind of the whole thing he's been doing the last thirteen chapters. Mm -hmm. But there are other categories of things that just mm -hmm. not as big a deal. Why? So, like, Paul, can I have sex with this person and that person? Nah. Doctrine. Right. That that one matters. Paul, you shouldn't let that person eat that meat because that meat was sold at a market where they sacrificed it to idols. Apparently, that doesn't matter to him as much. <laughs> at least the force of this argument is like, hey, if that person feels that way, let him. Why? Why? Because, because at the end of the day, how do I want to say this? At the end of the day, things... There are certain things that matter. There are certain things, well, we could say are, are, are primary issues and tertiary issues. Mm -hmm. This is one of those tertiary issues. It's, it's an important thing to know. Secondary, right? Primary, secondary? I'm saying, no, I'm making this going all the oh, way down. Oh, you're going down. You're skipping secondary. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm saying it, it just, it's, it's not even a secondary <laughs> issue. Okay. okay, 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 got it. <laughs> and, and, and this is one of those issues for him. Why do you think that to him, this doesn't equate doctrine? Because culturally it matters a lot. So much to the extent that in, in Cor uh, Corinthians, he actually makes the conclusion, hey, yeah, don't eat the idols, abstain from those things, av avoid the appearances of evil, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But why does, he, why does he seem to still make that distinction? Uh, again, in Corinth, precisely because he's dealing with like a specific situation in Corinth where it seems as though the Corinthians, man, they're taking some liber liberalities. They're not just eating meat. They're out there 
you know, eating meat and drinking, then rising up to play. And that play is and a that very play specific is a very word. specific type of play. And Paul's like, oh, so y'all think y'all can eat meat, drink the drink, and then rise up and play? Mm-mm. Y'all participating with demons. Mm-mm. Don't do that, yeah, right? That's a whole that. other thing. That is but another thing. In a regard to somebody who might take some meat home from the market or they sit down with a brother and it's like, well, that was sacrificed to an idol because they didn't in the market. <laughs> I mean, it was sacrificed to an idol, but like you and I know that there's only one true God and those other things are just statues. It's not a big deal. It's like, we're not over here having orgies like the Corinthians. <laughs> <laughs> We just sat here on this picnic, dude. Did you hear about that church down the street? You know what what their Sunday afternoon activity you know was? Saying? Like, dang. Yeah, and Paul's just like, listen, when you partake, like, you're both partaking in thankfulness to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Eat with gratitude that the giver of good gifts has given you these good gifts. Yeah, he talks about who are you to judge another person's servants. And it's this imagery. It's like imagine, uh, and, and the the message does this very, very, Eugene very Peterson. well. Peterson. Brilliant. What a godly man. Right? I, I, I'm looking for him in heaven one day. Oh, yeah. I need to meet that guy. The picture that he paints is, listen, you and I are invited to the Lord's table to eat. Yeah. I'm a vegetarian and you're not. Yeah. Or we could just, I like rice and you like beans. Whatever the thing is. That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> and true. <laughs> no, I like rice and beans. I'm Dominican. Fair enough. <laughs> so there's food on the table. And then because I'm a vegetarian or because I like this food and I don't like that food. Here's a real example. I don't like eggplant. Do you like eggplant? No. Okay. Well, then we got to find some controversy here. Either way, let's say you did like eggplant. Uh-huh. Eggplants on the table, and I start yelling at you. Oh, eggplants, terrible! And we start fighting. Jesus is sitting right next to us, and we're guests at his table. Yeah. Like, what are you guys doing? Why are you fighting over this thing when you're both guests at the table? Why are you judging one another so harshly? That is good. We are both guests at the master's table, and if we're both guests at the master's table, how rude and how impolite! Such a violation of decorum to actually elevate your opinion over somebody else and use it as the justifying point in order to judge them and plot them on a lower rung of the ladder ladder Mm -hmm. of value right all the while while you're in the master's home and in the house that you've been inviting in you're positioning yourself as master right and him as just bystander yeah i read something earlier that was saying that this is why judging someone else Mm -hmm. is the worst of all sins Mm -hmm. judging a brother is the worst sin that you can commit Mm -hmm. because it places you in the position of the master Mm -hmm. as though you had the right to make that judgment call on someone else i gotta be honest with you man okay i was that man really I'll be honest with you as well. I am that man at many times in my life still. And I was that man in the sense that my identity was derived from correct theology. I've been there before. If I can prove that my idea is better than your idea, Mm -hmm. then I must be better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I would use my ability to pull on words from some sort of mental lexicon and overwhelm you with definitions and terms and argumentations and I would appeal to certain thinkers in history that thought the same and I would relate myself to them in order to prove to you that not only do I read more books but I'm smarter and the force of my argument is greater sit down I've done that one too many times and I would elevate my opinion as a It's a club because all the while, while I'm doing all this arguing, I know in the innermost parts of me that I'm just constructing an argument that I myself either don't believe or I'm not fully convinced of. But my goal is to, you know, you're wrong. I'm right. You know, so I operate in the same space trying to prove myself right above and beyond other people. And I really felt like I was correct. Mm -hmm. So my journey changed when I realized there's some stuff that I believe about God that's wrong. But the problem is, is I don't know what I'm wrong about. Hmm. Because the converse is this. Either I am A or B, right? There's no C. Either you have everything right about God Mm -hmm. or you don't. Hmm. I'm never going to be arrogant enough to say that I understand God completely, Mm -hmm. that he's the infinite and my finite mind Mm -hmm. can comprehend him. So Mm -hmm. clearly I must be wrong about something. Mm -hmm. But if I knew what I was wrong about, Mm -hmm. then I would just change my mind about that thing. 
So there are things that I believe that are wrong, but I don't know which ones are wrong. Mm. So treating others with this type of arrogant attitude as mm. though everything that I, I'm going to beat you down with my truth mm. is a really terrible place to live because mm. how does God reach my heart? Mm -hmm. How does God change and mold me? If that's the way that I look, if I'm here to quarrel over opinions mm -hmm. and to browbeat someone else. Man, that's good because as I hear you saying that, what you're telling me is that, or what I'm hearing is that you would fall into this thing as I would as well, that my posturing is that I'm master and mm -hmm. Lord, I understand and I know, and I am the criterion of truth. And in doing that, we don't correctly see ourselves as invited guests. Yeah. And what the gospel did for me is that he invited me in, set the table, and said, my son, sit down. And when I sat down, I saw others who I didn't think were there. And I went, oh, man, we're all included in this thing. And to then have grace for people from a position of having a place in your father's house, right? To have a grace because... I have a seat at my father's table because I am who he says I am. And don't let somebody else's eating lessen you, or more importantly, lessen them. That's right. We're, We're all children of God. At the table. That's, That's right. right. That's good. See you guys in the next 10 minutes. <laughs>